Hey everyone, Adam Zollinger here from LearnArcViz. Welcome to my channel all about architectural visualization. While you are here, make sure to like and subscribe if you benefit from the content. The following video is a free preview from a larger course. Follow the links in the description to find the best deal for the full content. Okay, hopefully we understand how cameras work in general. Let's look at how this applies to virtual cameras. And a little hint for you, it works exactly the same. Except that we're not limited by the physical world. We can kind of go like crazy aperture sizes, crazy shutter speeds, whatever. We don't need a tripod or anything. We're not limited by light levels in the natural world or anything like that, but all the settings are the same. Okay, so to set up a camera, we just go to our create panel, of course, and instead of going to shapes or geometry, we go to cameras. Now there's standard cameras. The physical camera is comes with 3ds Max and it is the most similar to a real world camera. However, I prefer the V-Ray camera, which also has all the same settings as a real-world camera. The physical camera in 3ds Max and the V-Ray camera are very similar. The, I find the V-Ray one to be slightly more simple, and we're learning about V-Ray, so let's learn about the V-Ray camera. So from the top view, we just need to select V-Ray physical camera, and we can just click and drag. The box is the target of where our camera is aiming at, and the little icon you see down here is the actual camera so you can see which direction we're looking so let's do that and then from the side view make sure that we are not in the ground yeah we're good so with that camera selected if i hit c then i will then look through the camera okay and you can see that let's close this down you can see that i'm pretty low to the ground so all our controls for the camera are down here and these are like cinematic controls so you'll see field of view that zooms the camera in and out dolly the camera that actually moves the camera forward and back like it's on a dolly pan camera means that we're looking in different directions so the camera stays still but we are looking in different directions okay and then there's the truck camera which is what we think of with panning usually in in software but with a camera it's little the wordage is a little bit different the verbiage is a little bit different so this would be like panning in the viewport, but it's all, it's called trucking when it comes to camera. So picture it on a rail and sliding that rail from, or sliding on that rail, rolling on that rail from side to side. Similar to this where it's dolly. So dolly and truck are like perpendicular to each other. Okay. Trucking the camera side to side, dollying it forward and back. And then the third one is the pan, which means look in any direction. Okay. So we want to dolly backwards. Let's go to the top view again. We want to be right up against this wall back here. So we're, we're in the right place. Okay, and we want to be, I mean, usually you want to be basically at eye height or eye level. And then we just want to pan to maybe see a little bit more of the pool. Make sure we've got a good composition here. Okay, so I mean, that's the most basic part of setting up a camera. Now, if we select the camera, we can go into the modifier stack and change every setting of the camera too. So you can go to the top view and select the camera like that and then we have all the modifier available over here or when you're in the camera you can right click here and say select camera and again okay so the focal length is going to be an important thing and that's the zoom of a camera you can see you can zoom way out so we have a really really wide angle distorts everything a lot makes it look way bigger in here than it really is because we're at a very exaggerated zoom basically like a, a fisheye lens on that thing right there is pretty nice so for as a rule of thumb for architectural stuff i don't usually go much lower than like 28 unless you're specifically going for a distorted look but you can see this is really changing how this feels back here it feels like a big old backyard even though we know from modeling it that it's a really kind of cozy backyard so this seems more like our human eye right more like this okay now, you've seen the settings of a regular camera. Here, those same settings are for the aperture. There's white balance. There's tilt shift. Okay, we're going to talk about all this as we start rendering and see what kind of effects we're having here. One thing that we can talk about before rendering, though, is the tilt shift. A tilt shift camera is a camera that is traditionally used in architectural photography. And I'll show you what it does. It's a special lens that straightens out these vertical lines. So that is called the tilt. 
and typically, okay, if I turn this off, so it's doing it automatically now, but if I turn it off and do the tilt automatically, so as that lens tilts, it distorts in different ways because of how the lens is pointing at it. But you want to get it straight because in architectural photography, it is very much the norm to have these vertical lines straight up and down. Whereas if we turn this off completely, you can see they're slightly bowed in. And if we turned down the, the focal length and got way up close to the, now you can see they're not even close to straight up and down, right? If we got way up here, but zoomed way out. Okay, now it's, now it's all sorts of distorted and these lines are not straight up and down. So we'd go to this tilt shift and we can do this. And when we try to straighten it out, then we get lots of distortion going on. And that's because we're at such a wide angle. So if you wanted kind of this really dramatic composition like this, then you could, you could set it up like this if you wanted. That's not what I'm going to do here though. We're going to do a more formal looking, a more natural looking shot. Okay. And that involves having the line straight up and down too. Now the shift is if you shift the lens, the shift the lens up and down. So if we were doing a skyscraper, we might need to do something like that. In this case, we don't really need to do it. And usually we can just, it's sufficient to just say automatically shift, automatically tilt the vertical lines so that they go straight up and down because that is what we're used to seeing in architectural photography. Okay, so beyond that, that's really all we need to do to set up the camera, and the rest of these settings will dial in as we start rendering and seeing what our light capabilities are at, or our light exposure is at.